Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren, if you've never seen any of the videos here before. Um, and sometimes I drop by YouTube and I make fun videos about our adventures or fashion stuff, or right now I've been doing a lot of RV videos because we purchased and rehabbed a previous rental unit Class C RV from Cruise America. Feel free to go through any of my other videos and kind of watch that experience. Today is gonna be a quick video. What I wanna share with you guys today is this project that we're gonna do where we upgrade the electrical system for cheap. So this 25 foot RV that we have um, has a 30 amp power situation. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that when we plug in, we have access to 30 amps of power, which is roughly 3,600 watts. You know, you're using an appliance, it's usually in watts. And for me, my first experience dealing with um, the whole amp situation was um, when we got this RV. And it was hard for me to kind of figure out what that meant in practical use terms. So, usually when we plug into the pedestal, we have access to 30 amps of power, 3600 watt. It means that I can run a lot of things. Now, usually where it gets a little tricky or sticky is if, let's say I wanna make lasagna in the convection microwave oven that we have, and I also want to blow dry my hair, and it means that you know maybe I also want to run the AC at the same time. I might run into a few problems. I might exceed the number of wattage that I have, which means I'm probably going to um, pop the breaker. What's the workaround here? Option one is I can upgrade our electrical system in here so that we switch out the fuse box. That could be a little more time consuming. It might be more expensive. And we're looking for some ways that we can maybe do it on the cheap. We can either suck it up and say, can't use the microwave or I can't use the AC at the same time or things like that. Um, or we could throw an extension cord outside and use um, what's left of the pedestal. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is, uh, a lot of the pedestals, a lot of these different campsites are, they're wired in so that you can use either 30 amp or 50 amp. So a big class A RV can pull in, they can also use this pedestal and it's already set up for them to use 50 amps of power. And that means that me pulling in, plugging in, I'm kind of leaving 20 amps on the table. So I could throw an extension cord outside, plug in and maybe use, let's say a secondary AC unit if you're somewhere that's very hot. Here in comes what we're gonna do today. We are going to um, drill a hole where the power box is in our RV, like where our cord is plugged in. I'll take you outside and show you in a second. We're gonna drill a hole and we're gonna add a second plug so that basically we can plug a secondary extension cord into the box outside and it's gonna go straight from the power pedestal into a second plug in our RV and then we're gonna have a second outlet under the banquette where we can utilize that other 20 amps of power. And then say in the future, when we want to maybe plug in a secondary uh, air conditioning unit, if we're somewhere that's very, very hot, or we just wanna have access to um, more of the power that's at the pedestal, all we have to do is go outside and we're gonna plug in um, an extension cord next to our plugged in uh, regular 30 amp cord. And it's gonna go directly next to where that cord is plugged into the RV and I will just be able to, inside, plug appliances or anything that I want into another little outlet under the banquette. So I'll kind of show you guys what that looks like as we go along. I do have some help today, and by help, I mean my husband's probably gonna do all of it, but we're gonna record the process, and then hopefully I'll be able to explain it to you uh, in a way that is helpful. Um, I will say that I am not an electrician <laughs> by trade, nothing. Uh, even close to that, but um, my husband does have a background in electronics and, and electrical stuff, <laughs> uh, technical electrical stuff, so um, he knows what he's doing, so he'll be able to get that situated under there. I'm going to try to get good videos and pictures, and um, hopefully when I close out this video, uh, you guys can let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, or if there's something in the video that I didn't explain well enough and you just want some clarity on. Hopefully I explain that okay and that makes sense to you guys. So without any further ado, let's go outside and get the project started. Okay guys, so here is our pedestal. I'm almost afraid to touch it. Do you know what? I, I came to one of these and it's literally full of hornets, so uh, beware. So this is where our surge protector is plugged in. 
um, and this is also where you would plug in just the same like we do with 30 amps you would plug in if you had a 50 amp uh, power situation and um, this is where we are going to plug in to um, utilize that other 20 amps of power we'll probably just plug an extension cord right here in this one and if you can see right here uh, we have the 50 amp situation off and the 20 amp situation off if we plug in the secondary um, extension cord over here we would probably just go ahead and turn that 20 amp on um, so let's go I'm going to show you where we're looking at drilling the hole into the power situation in the RV okay guys so this is where our little shoreline cubby is so I'm going to put this up so you can see right there where the plug is it is a mess in here that I need to clean up but you can see right here is where we keep this plugged in so this is our regular 30 amp cord that we have plugged in so we're thinking either here or there right next to our other plug is where we're going to go ahead and add um, a secondary plug and uh, this whole situation this whole cubby here is actually directly under the bank at so this will be perfect and uh, easy for us to access that plug when we are seated here we are under the dinette table right now and we're looking to put the outlet right about here I think that'll be pretty easy we're, we're talking about it might be good for maybe shorter cords to have it kind of over here a little bit more versus back there but I'll show you guys when we start the process that black the back side of that black box that we're gonna put the other plug in is directly under this right here so it should be um, hopefully a pretty easy project all right so I don't know if you can see it's not perfect but it is definitely less gross than it was before I think we're ready to go ahead and uh, get that hole drilled we got a little double camera action for you now just so you can see where we decided to put the hole uh, in the black box under the dinette just doing a little basic dry fitting here about half an inch of exposed copper on each one we're gonna go white to white black to black screw it in nice and tight you want it snug you don't want it to slip out while you bounce down the road or anything like that nice and snug usually it's green to green we weren't able to find the green wire anywhere it seemed like they were out of stock at the four or five different stores that we tried so for our purposes in this video the pink wire is our green or ground wire nice and snug in there you can see you don't want any exposed copper coming out of the back We're just going to go ahead and pass these wires through and uh, make sure that we get these out of the way so that we can screw the plug down from inside the black box. Here we're just going to put that little back cap on and that is just to protect, uh, make sure we don't get any debris or anything down in where the screws were. We're going to use butyl tape for this. There's a couple reasons why I like butyl tape. Uh, I think if you're in an RV, you're going to need to keep some butyl tape handy. Uh, you know, this would probably help keep any bugs out. This would help keep water out. But let me be real with you. If you have water down here, you probably have other problems. <laughs> um, but this also serves a purpose of if you're doing this by yourself, uh, it's going to be kind of a helping hand. and keep that outlet in place for you so that you can get the screws uh, in without it shifting around. All good and we'll come back and clean that up later. All right, so we're just kind of making sure that we draw the hole out first so we know where we're gonna cut. I would recommend you do this. You don't really go in blind. And then we're just gonna drill four holes in the corner so it's easier to get the multi-tool in to cut the square out.
All right, easy enough. Let's go ahead and get that box in. So we're adding another piece of wood on the other side because uh, we need something to screw that one side of the electrical box in just to make it a little more secure. Perfect, that way it uh, shouldn't be loose when we drive down the road. But the screws that we have, um, we just used whatever was on hand. Um, you'll see later in the video, I think we, yeah, we swapped the screws out on this side just because it was hard to get the tabs in place. All right, go ahead and feed that wire through the hole. So we're gonna leave about this much, just a little cable management back here. Uh, we definitely recommend using a little wire loom because you don't want uh, this to have a lot of abrasion as it bounces down the road. Uh, but make sure you don't want any like right angles or hard kinks in your wire. So you can see the length right here. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna trim these up because we want these all to be the same size. Now that they're all the same length, we're just gonna go ahead and again, we're gonna take about half inch of that sheathing off so that we have some exposed copper in order to wire up our outlet. All right, so you're just gonna make a little J shape right here. Perfect, you're just gonna hook it right over the brass. All right, so something to remember right here, if you're like, what side does what go on? Apparently the saying here is uh, black to brass saves your And the black wire is uh, actually our hot wire. Yep, so you want that nice and tight, you want contact. Again, this is another argument for not using stranded wire. Um, and you can use that solid wire if you're able to find it at the store or order it on Amazon. Um, if I find it, I'll post a link down below. But like I said, we went to so many stores and just could not find that anywhere. Now we're gonna take this white wire. The white wire is our neutral and these are gonna go on the side with the chrome screws. There we go. And um, I'll tell you that we did go back and my husband cleaned up these and made sure that they were nice and tight, but made sure that the, the wires were neatly bundled and wrapped around all of these screws. So make sure that you do that. You don't want it to be fanned out or anything like that. You're really trying to get the most contact. Okay, and so this, like I said before, um, our pink wire should be green if you're able to find that, that green wire at the store. And we're gonna go ahead and screw this in uh, to the green screw. And that is our ground wire. Again, make sure that it's uh, neatly wrapped around that screw. Make sure it's nice and snug. You don't want anything to be loose. Like we said, we're in an RV, we're driving down the road, we're gonna bounce, so it's important that everything is snug. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and screw our outlet in. Perfect. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, the reason why we are specifically doing this is we were I want to say like last July we were in the Tampa area and it was almost 110 outside. So we have the Coleman Mock air conditioning unit in here and I think it's a great AC. I think it does a, a wonderful job but uh, my understanding is that these are really only rated to um, make it maybe 11 degrees cooler than ambient is, is what I believe it says. Um, 11 degrees is a big difference when it's 110 outside. But I will tell you that um, it doesn't feel like the air conditioning is on sometimes. So in general, like right now where we are, um, 
you know, maybe if it's in the 80s or the 90s or something like that. Right now it's only been in those upper 80s and we do feel a difference with the AC on, but I'm worried we are headed somewhere where it is gonna be even hotter. Um, and so my concern is that we are going to bake. <laughs> so we're thinking about getting like maybe a little portable floor unit or something like that, have it vent outside and that way if it's if we're really in trouble, we can run the uh, roof unit and on that other 20 amps, we're gonna be able to run that secondary AC unit. But during the times when it's not a million degrees outside, it should just help us. Just the convenience of being able to run uh, more appliances at once and not have to worry about popping anything. So um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys and um, I explained it well enough. This should be a pretty easy project. This is cheaper than upgrading your whole electrical system and really the whole point of this was up the convenience factor and lower the cost. Every little bit helps, right guys? So uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Happy trails and uh, go forth, be kind, be creative. Bye guys. <laughs>